good morning. Yeah, back to 555. This is the Labor Day video, and the title is Labor Day, and people want our paycheck. <laughs> I had no idea what today's title would be till I realized it was the Labor Day video. It took a long while for me to get out of bed this morning as I pondered the struggle going on inside of me, asking for clarity. I sense that I am where humanity is at this point in time in labor. The new earth and new humanity represented by the baby in my dream a little over a month ago keep calling to me. Yet I continue to see the impediments that delay delivery. People want money. People want the controllers to release what is our inheritance and stop the delays, stop making excuses. There are still many pushing religious exclusivity and biblical infallibility, as if that is the answer. I see it as a big part of the problem, not a solution. Rumors of currency revaluations continue to swirl along with more rumors of the restoration of the U.S. Republic and common law worldwide. I feel tired and several of my closest friends feel similar anxiety. Some give the message to find peace within. Great advice. How? When we're in labor giving birth to a new world based on truth. The only world we've ever known is lies. I hope that this will be coherent <laughs> because there are so many different aspects that I'm aware of going on inside of me at the same time. It's almost like there's different parts of my soul that are all crying for my attention. It's almost as if each one of them has its own personality and its own separate needs and wants my attention. And some pull me in one direction and some pull me in the what seems like it's the opposite direction. But are they really opposite directions? Or is what's going on inside of me really a cry for wholeness? A longing for fulfillment? A longing to reach a conclusion that finally does bring peace? But not just peace within me, but peace within my environment. Peace within the world in which I live. It's one thing to be able to have the beautiful experiences that connect us with life, where we feel we are at one with God and with all that is. Those are beautiful experiences. I've had them. I've shared them. I've listened as others have shared their experiences, similar, even though different in the details. And it's thrilling when we have such a connection that comes to our experiential mind, heart, being. It's, it's thrilling. It really is. And I would never put down anyone's ecstatic experience of meeting Jesus or meeting the Buddha or meeting any aspect of the divine. But my message has always been not to put Jesus on a pedestal, not to put some prophet on a pedestal, but to get us to look inside to see that we are the prophet. We are the son, the daughter of God. We are the one that is important. Not them, not their role, not what they did or didn't do. But what are we going to do about it? My whole thing has been not on focusing on what we've done wrong, but on focusing on who we are. We are children of the living God. I believe that. I believe that is the message that integrates and reconciles all things. I don't believe a message of how bad we are, of how sinful we are, 
will ever reconcile the world. I think it's more of the same old, same old division, more of the same problems that have created the world that we live in and gotten us to the point where we've sold our birthright. We've sold our inheritance for trinkets, for temporary manifestations of something that we think we want, some material thing, a relationship. Actually, I don't think that that's a material thing. I think that's the only thing that's real is our relationships, beginning with the relationship with ourself, beginning with the relationship with the God that is in us, living as us, through us. But if that God is schizophrenic, if that God is deaf, if that God is impotent, and many of us, that's the image that we have. We have an image of a, of a powerful God, but we don't live as if that God is powerful. We don't live as if that God is inside of us. We don't live as if the law is written on our heart. We still look for it in books, holy books, though they may be called. I've not seen that as the answer. I was raised with that mentality. The only world I've ever known is lies. The only thing I've ever known is people that have control, people that are in power, lying to me and lying to the rest of humanity with promises of some future redemption, promises of some future manifestation of, of prosperity. But it's never now because we're never ready because we're never good enough, because we're never, we're never where we need to be to receive. And there's truth to that. There's truth to that. But is it true because it's true? Or is it true because that's what we're told is true? Do we just simply rise to the expectation of those that, that define us and those that tell us who we are? Do we need some external authority to validate us? Well, maybe we do. Maybe that's the bridge we need. People cry for the restoration of the Republic. I've been crying for that for a long time. The Republic is the only form of government that limits the government and gives the people the power. But if people are ignorant and people are not educated and people don't understand that the role they need to need to play in order to keep the government in check, it gets out of control. People say we, we, we want a bottom-up system, but most of the people of the world, are we, do we have enough of a grasp to even connect the dots of what reality is in our world to be able to exercise wisdom, to exercise common sense? to empower ourselves. It's easy to say, people, it's all your fault. People, you need to get ready. People, you need to, you need to repent of your sins. People, you need to do this. People, you need to do this. And where's it coming from? It's coming from people who own the inheritance that's our inheritance. They are the controllers. Yes, I'm talking the dragon family, but the Illuminati too. Doesn't matter whether it's the dark or the light. Somebody else is in control. Somebody else determines when we are going to get our paycheck. When we are going to finally have fulfillment. And they say, people say, well, Ron, you've got to find it in yourself first. And they divide. It's a system of separation, of dividing between the inner and the outer. And I've said and I believe with all of my heart that no system of separation, no belief system based on separation is ever going to make us whole. It's only going to leave us broken and divided and alienated in the world that we live in so that our experience is one of unfulfillment, of disempowerment, of poverty, because we're never allowed to have all the pieces come together. Always there is a limitation. Always there is a restriction. Always there is an excuse why we cannot have our inheritance now. It says in the Bible, 
Today is the day of salvation. Today. Not tomorrow. Today. Now is the accepted time, it also is written. Oh, really? Well, if now is the accepted time, why do we have to wait till tomorrow to get the inheritance? Why do we have to wait till tomorrow to find fulfillment? These are questions that I'm wrestling with. I'm tired of the old way of dangling carrots and promises out in front of us. Well, the inheritance is yours and you'll get it as soon as you are ready. Who determines if you're ready? Do I have the right to make that determination for someone else? Well, common sense would tell me that you can't give a child that has no experience or no conscious awareness of who they are. They're still developing that awareness. You can't give a child total free reign and let them do whatever they want to do. They'd, they'd hurt themselves, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? If we allowed the ch a, a child, a young, you know, say a five-year-old, to do whatever the five-year-old wanted to do. I mean, I've watched it with my grandson, who's six years old now, but I've watched him. I've watched him. He is fearless. He wants his own way. He demands his own way in relationships with his rest, the other members of his family. He doesn't like to be told what to do. But he doesn't have much experience either. But he thinks he knows. He has confidence that, is it my job to tell him that his confidence is misfounded? Well, I make excuses that it is. But is it? Is it anybody's responsibility to limit somebody else? Is not the human race, in a sense, like a toddler? Are not many people unaware of who they are? Of course. Of course, that's the truth with a lot of people. But it's not the truth with everybody. Lots of people are waking up. Lots of people are doing our best to put the pieces together and to come to a place where we do find an integration and a reconciliation within us. I've experienced that, and yet I think I've made a bargain with God before my, before my incarnation to experience life as the ordinary people experience life. I think I made that deal before I ever came into this incarnation, before my parents gave me to God before I was even born. I think I made some kind of a deal that I had to live just a normal life with normal resources and feel the feelings that human beings feel, the frustration of what it means to be human. I do believe the human race is in labor. I do believe we are giving birth to a new humanity. I do believe we're creating a new world together. And there is a struggle that's involved. You know, is it a struggle because we've sinned? Well, we've certainly forgotten who we are. We've not recognized that we are children of God. Now, some people say a child of God is only someone that has gone through a certain religious practice of, of believing something, of, of, of reciting some kind of a creed or, or doctrine or believing a certain set of standards. Some say that children of God, people, people are not naturally children of God. Well, I look at us all as prodigal children of God. And what did, does the Bible say? Now, I don't believe that the Bible is infallible. I don't believe it's the word of God. I believe it contains wisdom from God, but I don't believe it's the infallible word of God. That's how I was taught. I don't believe it, but what does it say about the prodigal son? The father looked at the prodigal son when he came home and said, this my son was dead, but he's alive now. He was blind, but now he's starting to see again. Hmm. But it was still my son. Even when dead, even when blind, still my son, still my child. That's true of the human race. It doesn't matter how far we've drifted. I want to point. I want to point not to what we've done wrong, but to what's inside of us, because the kingdom of heaven is inside of us.
The kingdom of God is inside of us. The divine is inside of us, living as us. And that's where I want to put my focus. That's where I want to, to uh, see my spirituality coming into fruition. Who am I? Not why am I here? Not what did I do wrong? But who am I? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the Creator, a part of creation that is also creative, that is also a Creator, because that's the image that I share with the Creator. I am a Creator. You are a Creator. And we have an inheritance that's ours as co-creators with God of the reality in which we live. It is up to us. We do need to do things. We do need to involve ourselves in spiritual warfare as the red dragon keeps on indicating and teaching. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that he had an encounter with, with Jesus that was powerful. I appreciate that. I don't appreciate preaching Christian doctrine that to me has been part of the separation, that has been part of the lie, that has been part of the disempowerment of humanity. I don't appreciate focusing on what's wrong. I would rather focus on what's right and on who we are because I think that's where the power comes from. That's where our, our fulfillment will be coming from. How do I create it? I don't know. I'm glad for those that are that are in control of wealth, that have our, that are having spiritual awakenings, and recognizing that what they hold, they don't own it either. The people own it; they just aren't in control of it yet. It's all entrusted to certain individuals, and it does need to be hierarchical until we are mature enough as a human family to be able to take responsibility for our own lives and take responsibility for the systems that we create, the governments, the companies, the, the methods of trade, the monetary system, if you will. We are responsible for those and we need to grow up. We need to wake up. We need to become who we really are. And as we Go into this Labor Day in 2014. Let us have the vision that each of us, whether male or female, is pregnant with a divine child, and that divine child is us. That divine child is our essential nature. It's our essential being. It's our eternal identity. Let us find that within ourselves and give birth to it, because that is what we don't want to abort. That is what we don't want to deny. That is what we don't want to escape from or separate from because that is the only thing that will pull us together and give us the desire of our heart that fulfills the longing of our soul to be one with all life and to finally experience a world that works for everyone. Thank you for listening. Namaste.